Greetings, young squires. This is Sir Roland Paterlot, a faithful knight to the one true light, and you're listening to our series on how to face, fight, and defeat the seven deadly dragons. Today we start on the next dragon, the one in the middle. There's three dragons before it and three dragons after it. So this dragon is in the center, like the heart, and this dragon will try to steal your heart. So before I tell you the color of this dragon and describe it to you, I need to read to you a very important scripture passage from the book of Matthew which is a direct quote from Jesus. It's a warning to beware of this dragon who tries to steal your heart. He said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The next dragon we will discuss is the green dragon of greed. Where does your allegiance lie? What do you treasure the most in life? What do you put all your heart into? Your video games? Your house? Your school? Your favorite football team? Pizza? Your piggy bank? No. You know as well as I do that our true treasure is in heaven. That is our goal, which is why we strive to be the saints God calls us to be. And nothing and nobody in this world should deter us from that goal. But the green dragon of greed sure tries to distract us with all kinds of worldly treasure. And if we aren't careful and train hard to slay this dragon, he very well may trip us up from time to time and give us the dragon's sickness of smog, the greedy dragon in J.R.R. Tolkien's book The Hobbit, who steals the gold of Lonely Mountain and then jealously sits on his treasure hoard. And if you fall for the lies of the green dragon, you too will be in a lonely place. What's that, you asked? Shouldn't the dragon of envy be green? Oh, I bet you're referring to that saying, green with envy. Perhaps you've heard it before. I'll admit, I thought about making the Envy Dragon green, but it just didn't work out with my order of sins and the colors of the rainbow. I'm very meticulous in my training methods, and I've put these dragons in a specific order for a specific reason, which I will reveal to you in due time. I'm not saying you have to put them in any certain order by church law or anything, but I must share with you how my brain works to help me recognize each dragon and ultimately slay each dragon. Besides, green with Envy really makes no sense. Did you know the phrase was started because of a story written by William Shakespeare in which one of the characters says, Beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. Now, if this is true, and I'm not entirely sure that it is, then personally, I don't know how that quote started the phrase green with envy. Is it just because the monster's eyes are green? It doesn't even correlate. So maybe we can start a new trend together and change the phrase to orange with envy. Because the orange dragon is Nvidia, the dragon of envy. Doesn't that flow off the tongue better anyway, orange with envy? And wouldn't it make more sense to make the green dragon the dragon of greed? I mean, green and greed share the exact same first four letters. So let's talk about the color green, and how it is good and true and beautiful and brings new life to the world. And then I will tell you how the color corrupted turns into the green dragon. Green represents new life because it is the color we often associate with nature, especially in the spring, when the green grass grows and leaves come to life on the trees. Green is the color of prosperity, which is why our money is green. And since green is in the middle of the visible light spectrum, it is the most easily visible color to the human eye. That is why road signs are often green and green lights are green. Oh, and that reminds me, green also means go. So what happens when the color green is corrupted? What happens when you steal the N at the end of the word and replace it with a D? You get greed. The N stood for new life. The D stands for death or dragons. It is only a dragon that can take something good and true and beautiful like new life and turn it into something evil, false and ugly like death. What's that you asked? What did I name the green dragon? Oh, I'm glad you asked. The Catechism of the Catholic Church calls this dragon avarice. That's also what Sir Wyvern Pugilist calls his greedy dragon in his great dragon slayer's manual. But avarice is kind of an English word, and you know me, I like to pick the Latin or Greek names. Or Hebrew. In early Christian writings of the Greek fathers of the church, they referred to this dragon as philarguria, which means love of money, or more precisely, love of silver. Now that word is just too hard for me to say, so even I am not going to use that name. We could shorten it to Phil, but that word means love, and I refuse to name the dragon that. Besides, I have a lot of friends named Phil, and they probably wouldn't like that. So I've decided to shorten it to Argios, which simply means silver. If you want to give him a nickname, you could call him Argy, which kind of sounds like a dog. Here, Argy. 
But trust me, you don't want the dragon to come around. He's huge, and he's greedy, and he's never satisfied. You can't find enough treasure or food to feed this dragon's appetite for gold or silver. And if you try to make him a pet, he will end up being your master, and you will be his pet. What's that, you asked? Sir Roland, are you really going to name the green dragon a word that means silver? Isn't that like naming an orange a yellow, or a blueberry a red berry? Geesh, you sure are asking a lot of questions today. The answer is yes. I'm going to name the green dragon a word that means silver, so Argios it is. After all, our money isn't just green, it's also silver if you look at the coins. But enough of the nomenclature, it is now time for me to give you the battle cry to the green dragon. Beware of the dragon all dressed in green. He is big and he tempts you to a heart full of greed. He'll sell you his lie that more stuff gives you life, but to covet more things just brings death, grief, and strife. True happiness comes from a generous heart. The troubadour from Assisi is a great place to start. He gave up his wealth, just gave it away, then started an order that still thrives today. The breastplate of righteousness guards hearts on this earth to seek treasure in heaven, a far greater worth. So stay holy, young slayers, and until we meet again, I'll leave you under the protection of St. Michael the Great Archangel, St. Joseph the Terror of Dragons, and Mary, Queen of the Angels, Our Lady of Grace, and the woman who see crushed the head of the dragon. 